from the Genie Hayes Virtual Studio. This is Marquette Now. Good evening, I'm Andrew Amuzu. And I'm Caroline Bennett. Welcome to Marquette Now. Coming up, a blood battle in a good way. Curing appetites on four wheels. But first, we, we start with breaking news. The Commons Dining Hall has been closed due to unforeseeable circumstances until further notice. We'll give you an update if we can. Continue to follow MarquetteWire.org and our social media for further developments. Other dining halls continue to operate regularly. With Marquette University administration forcing student leaders involved in the new student convocation demonstration to step down from their positions last week, these are the news that we are also covering this week. The students' appeals were unsuccessful, attempting to overturn sanctions imposed on them as a result of participating in the August 25th convocation demonstration. The students are calling for more support for students of color on campus, citing deficits in staffing and resources. Here you see students and faculty marching in support of the students turning in their appeals two weeks ago. The students hold positions in organizations such as the Marquette University Student Government, Black Student Council, and Latin American Student Organization. The university says in a statement, quote, the student conduct process is separate from student organization leadership policies. It is a long-standing policy that the officers of all student organizations must be in good standing throughout their terms of office. The Market Wire reached out to the impacted students for an interview. They declined the offer. October marks the start of Campus Sustainability Month. Students learn more about Marquette's sustainable initiatives through late night Marquette programming. Students form teams and compete for prizes, but the biggest gains include knowledge and awareness. Sustainability is important because it's important to think about our future as a planet and think about um, future generations and how we are affecting future generations and the effect that we have um, on our planet. The Board of Trustees names three new members at its September meeting. Harvey J. Anderson II, Nicole Michaels, and James Ryan will serve the next three years. They're eligible to be re-elected for a maximum of 12 years. Marquette launches its blood drive competition with Butler University. The competitive week consists of students and faculty volunteering to give blood. One donation can save up to three lives. Participants can receive a gift card for donating. So we're doing a blood battle from Marquette and Butler. Um, so the goal is to collect at least a thousand units in total between the two schools. Contests are still to be determined. The blood battle will run until the end of the school year. Well, I've never done it before. I've always wanted to give blood. Um, I also have a friend that goes to Butler, and I understand there's a competition between Marquette and Butler, and I didn't want to lose. Members of the Habitat for Humanity group begin building a house in the city. Marquette Now's Andrew Hubbock invites us inside. It's 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning. While many people are up making breakfast in the neighborhood of Harambe, something bigger is being made. At Marquette's first Habitat for Humanity Build Day of the Year, Natalia Watson and a group of student volunteers are helping to create affordable homes. So do you guys all have to be part of like the volunteering thing for like, uh, like um, credits or something? No. no. Cool. Just sign on my email. <laughs> yeah. I hope the young people take away a drive to do more and to, you know, to reach out to the people around them because I know that it's, it's very frustrating to be my age and to feel that the world is falling down around your ears and there's nothing much you can do to save it. But things like this, getting your hands somewhere where you can help people is very important. I think it's really important because affordable housing is just so difficult, especially with Milwaukee and a lot that goes on. There's someone else who's benefiting from all of the work you're doing, and there's a whole family that's going to move into this house and have a life after this, which is really amazing. In a neighborhood with a troubled past, they're hoping to provide the change necessary for a promising future. Um, Harambe is um, majority black and majority poor because, you know, redlining and all that kind of racist nonsense. 
Harambe is still suffering effects of redlining to this day, and while many in the neighborhood fear it will be gentrified and torn apart, Natalia hopes otherwise. We're not just trying to solve like homelessness, we're also trying to preserve the community itself. Harambe is storied and it has a legacy. The point of Habitat is to encourage community building in literally putting houses on the ground so people can live in a community and stay there. The volunteers may have only been here for a day, but the result of their work will be cemented in Harambe's history for generations to come. I'm Andrew Hubbock, Marquette Wire News. Latin American student organization comes off their Noche de Karaoke in the Alumni Memorial Union Friday. This is one of many late night events celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. So I think the significance is that we can bring Hispanic students together and just start building the community up since the pandemic shut down a lot of interaction between students. Students singing together only if they want to. Some are just there to enjoy some Bad Bunny and free food. When I began here at Marquette, I was trying different orgs and one big thing was Lasso. So I decided to like become a part of it and I got to meet new more people and like build a lot of like strong like friendships, I would say, that would like last a lifetime and just the experiences and that social aspect of it. Totally Rad Vintage Festival came to Milwaukee this past Saturday and plenty of Marquette students turned out to catch all the deals. Dane Golden peruses the aisles with us. Every October, hundreds of vendors come to Milwaukee to sell, sort, and swap thousands of vintage items. These Marquette students in attendance found some new and unique items for a deal. Usually they're like hundreds of dollars, Levi's, so these were like 30 or less. Sure. I got like a t-shirt from one of the bins. It's just like very plain, but I was gonna say, yeah. I also was cheap and got a $5 shirt. Yeah. The festival hosts over 800 vendors who tour around the U.S. all autumn to share their timeless pieces. Oh my gosh, Totally Rad Vintage Fest is an absolute blast. The community of sellers, the camaraderie amongst us all is fantastic. Because when people say like they pick something up and they go, Oh my god, I love this. This is incredible. Classic clothes aren't the only things available at Totally Rad Vintage. Marquette students have a chance for great deals, whether it's a t-shirt, jeans, or another unique knickknack. I would be lying if I said I wasn't a victim of fast fashion, but personally I've been trying to buy more quality pieces, even like reuse, just so like I can have quality pieces that don't break in a month. The festival will come back next fall, so if you didn't catch it this year, the clothes will only become more vintage with time. Dane Golden, Marquette Wire. The Indigeneity Lab continues to shine on campus. After receiving the Student Activist Award, the lab ensures the work they do does not stop. Partnering with the U.S. Department of Arts and Culture in 2020, the lab works to amplify the voices of Native American students. Basically meeting with the students on a weekly basis and having them, like in my case, do research in the archives, or in both of our cases, do research in the archives, research Milwaukee newspaper databases, and basically go out into the community and work with Indigenous community members. I'm Katie Munson here with your current weather report. Earlier this afternoon, severe weather and tornadoes touched down near Milwaukee. We're still seeing a chance of rain right now. It's really cloudy with a chance of rain tonight. We're at 57 degrees currently with humidity of 52%. There's a 40% chance of precipitation tonight and winds are coming from the southwest at 10 miles per hour. That's it for now. We'll be right back with more after a quick break. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. We're not in your hand trying to text somebody back because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Over. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things. 
but they're all pure love. Every day, millions of people are connecting. Father. Cosplayer. Mentor. Actor. It's time we take a step forward, come together, and discover how accepting our differences can make us stronger. Welcome back to Marquette Now. I'm Katie Munson with a closer look at the weather. Tonight it's going to be 41 degrees with 63% humidity. There's going to be a 5% chance of rain tonight, which is much better than what we had earlier, and winds are going to be coming from the west at 9 miles per hour. Taking a look at our state overnight lows, in Minocqua it's going to be the coldest at 34 degrees, but here in Milwaukee we'll be at a breezy 52 degrees. Heading into tomorrow's highs, here in Milwaukee we will have the warmest weather once again at 52 degrees, and once again in Minocqua it's going to be chilly at 42 degrees. Tomorrow it's going to be 52 degrees here in Milwaukee with 52% humidity, a 60% chance of rain, so don't forget those umbrellas, and the winds are going to be coming from the west at 15 miles per hour. Jumping ahead to our five-day forecast, it's definitely going to be a chilly week once again with more fall weather coming through. It'll be the coldest on Monday at 44 degrees as the high and 28 degrees as the low. So definitely don't forget those coats, Marquette, and be sure to bundle up. Well, that's it for weather. How do you guys feel about it being 44 degrees? You know what? Not great. My friend said that she was going to try and teach me how to play ultimate frisbee after fall break at Valley Fields, and I think I might be stuck with a hat and gloves. I know. I know. Thank Hopefully. you so much, Katie, for Thanks, the weather. Thanks, Katie. Club Ultimate Frisbee is off to a flying start this year. Yeah, Marquette now's Gabrielle Cicerica brings us the action. There is one club sport that is different from the others. Marquette Frisbee, made up of Birdhouse and Moxie. These are the men and women's teams that make up Marquette Club Ultimate Frisbee. I didn't really know what Frisbee was and when I joined, like, everyone was just so nice and like, they are all about having a good time and including everyone. These two teams embody a culture filled with inclusion, friendship, and a welcoming atmosphere for all Marquette students. It's just such a fun sport. Like, it's, everyone cares about it a lot, and kind of Frisbee culture as like a whole is very much like embracing your weirdness. The Marquette Club Frisbee teams are no cut, and right now, they are split up between house and feeder. Well, we're always here to teach. You don't necessarily have to be a phenomenal player to show up. It's kind of just, you know, show up. We'll teach how to play, have fun. Um, having fun is like kind of paramount. It's the main reason you play. Um, obviously, you can get competitive, but if you want to just play, you can play. They want students to play, and there is a place for everyone. Whether you want to go out and compete or just have fun, Frisbee has a spot for everyone. And it's a really good time. There's times when you come out here and you're very serious and you're trying to make a tournament. Um, or regionals or nationals, and there's times where you come out and some of the points are like goofy points, uh, stuff like that. Like, it's it's not your traditional culture, but it's you know, it's a great time. Both Birdhouse and Moxie come together to support each other at tournaments and throughout the season. Both teams hold two practices a week and multiple tournaments throughout the fall season. One takeaway from Club Frisbee is that they go by one motto. I'm gonna do it plain and simple. I'm just gonna say like house is home. I'm Gabriel Cicerica, Market Wire News. The annual James W. Foley Freedom Run will take place this Saturday, October 15th. The Marquette community honors Foley each year for courage and journalistic integrity after he was executed by ISIS in 2014. All proceeds will support the James W. Foley Legacy Foundation, which aims to support journalism safety as well as bringing hostages home. A new craze has made it to campus. TJ Dysart takes us to the window of one popular campus food truck. On the corner of 19th and Wisconsin, just two blocks away from the Rave Eagles Ballroom, stands a new rave, the Arenda Food Truck. Said it's been here for a while. It's been here since the school year began. Um, I've been coming here basically every week, a couple times a week even sometimes. Originally started as a cafe, Arenda became a restaurant on wheels in 2020 due to the cafe shutting down because of the pandemic. So we started here at the end of August and it's been um, increasing the amount of people who are coming. I'm so glad everybody loves the food and we've gotten really good reviews and 
repetitive customers. Now at the Oranda food truck, there are a number of options that you can choose from. Me, I got a burrito today and many others telling me that they try a little bit of everything and have enjoyed most of it. Probably the quesadillas are really good. I personally like the pastor tacos. And the prices are pretty good, you know, it's like $3 and a couple cents for a taco. And it's the best you're gonna get with the food truck, you know, they gotta make some money. And Leticia Munoz shows me just how the money is made. The tortilla, we heat it on the flat top, and then we add beans. We have beans here. Well, I was uh, raised here in Milwaukee. I've been here 20 years. And although I don't like the winter, but we love, <laughs> you know, we're safe here. And if you want steak, it will go on the grill. Um, and then we add the lettuce, tomato, cheese, sour cream. I'm TJ Dysart. Marquette Wire News. Those quesadilla tacos are amazing. And those who are wishing to try a bite of the Orenda menu can locate the truck from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. across the street from Mashuda Hall. And if you think actors have a hard time trying to memorize lines, try having lines that entail spelling words of a dozen letters long. Well, Marquette Theater presents their 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, a musical with audience interaction and PG-13 humor. The show bar runs in the Healthcare Family Theater tomorrow through Saturday at 7.30 p.m. The final performance is a Sunday matinee at 2.30 p.m. And before we go to break, check out part of the opening scene. you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Welcome back. I'm Trevor Hilson with your Marquette Now Sports Report. Marquette women's basketball star alum and Connecticut Sun guard Natisha Heideman is making her return to college hoops. This comes after Penn State announced Monday that Heideman will be joining the women's basketball staff as Director of Player Development. Heideman will be reuniting with her former college coach, Carolyn Keeger, in State College. Heideman and Keeger won the 2017 Big East title together and went to three straight NCAA March Madness tournaments between 2017 and 2019. With basketball season just under a month away, the men's basketball team hosts its first intra-squad open scrimmage. From the start, the blue team proves dominant, leading 28-18 at the half. The gold team finds their groove in the second half, but it's a bit too late as the blue team finishes out the game strong, winning 65-46. Sophomore guard Cam Jones tallies a game-high 20 points. The real work begins on November 7th when the Golden Eagles host the Radford Highlanders in their season opener at the Fiserv Forum. Going into Saturday's match at Seton Hall, Marquette Volleyball is now ranked 16th after being ranked 18th last week and have a lot to show for it. It's a competitive start for both teams until Marquette rallies and goes on a 10-2 run to break open, open the game 16-8. The Golden Eagles don't look back and win set one 25 to 16. Set two is more of the same as neither team can break away and go on a run. Marquette finally finds a hole 
taking a 19 to 12 lead. Seton Hall strikes back and cuts Marquette's lead to five, but it is not enough as Marquette takes the second set 25 to 18. Looking for another sweep, the Golden Eagles jump out to a 14-4 lead and closes out the match 25-16. This marks the Golden Eagles' 13th straight victory and second sweep in a one-day span. Jenna Reitzma takes home Big East Defender of the Week after leading the Golden Eagles in kills and points. Junior middle Carson Murray earns a spot on the Big East Weekly Honor Roll after posting 11 kills and 5 blocks against St. John's. Coming up this week in athletics. Marquette men's soccer is looking to get back in the win column as they are currently facing off against the Siena Hall Pirates at Valley Fields. The teams are currently all knotted up at one goal apiece. Women's soccer hosts the Providence Friars tomorrow and will try to avoid four straight losses. The Marquette volleyball team hopes to keep an undefeated streak in Big East play on Friday when they visit the defending Big East champs, the Creighton Blue Jays. Men's soccer will be back in action this Saturday hosting the Yukon Huskies at 7 p.m. at Valley Fields. That's it for sports, but don't go anywhere. Marquette now will be right back with our Down to the Wire segment. Have you ever seen somebody treated unfairly because of the color of their skin? Do you guys know what it means to have white privilege? What is racism and what do you think about it? Talk to young children about what racism is, giving them the language to understand it. They can be disruptors. They can shape and shift culture. We may not always know the answer, but we'll try and help you learn. You don't have to have all the answers, but that doesn't mean we can't start. There are a lot of ways to reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back, I'm Andrew Muzu. And I'm Caroline Bennett. Market Wire Executive News Editor Julia Buzahab joins us now for tonight's edition of Down to the Wire. She's with our political expert Nancy Flaherty to talk about the Wisconsin governor and Senate races. Thanks Andrew and Caroline. Let's take a look at the Marquette Law School poll released earlier today. Senator Johnson increased his lead to now six points among likely voters. It was one point a month ago, and it was Barnes leading by seven right after the primary. Ron Johnson has moved to a six-point advantage over Mandela Barnes in the likely voter sample. So there's been some movement in that direction. For the governor's race, it's a one-point Evers lead, 47 to 46. Back on turn the independent at four and a small number of people not choosing. So first off, thank you so much, Nancy, for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me. But why is voting so important in this election, specifically for college students? That's a great question. Now, college students, right off the bat, um, are often the lowest kind of voter turnout in terms of age brackets across voter demographics. And so not only is it going to be important for college students to kind of get out the vote, especially in a midterm election where they're going to be, where in general, voter turnout is going to be less because it's not a presidential election year. It's going to be important for college students to specifically turn out to vote because a lot of issues that are quite concerning I think to students on campus um, specifically with the overturning of Roe v. Wade there were um, when that draft opinion was leaked there were protests on campus I believe that there's going to be already kind of students interested in seeing what their legislators and potential candidates are going to replicate and kind of represent for themselves um, as we are located in Milwaukee um, so it's going to be important for college students to vote to really make sure that they're doing their civic duty and making sure that um, who they want representing them in not only the state legislature but also the federal government is going to be mm -hmm. replicated of what they want to see. So the Wisconsin Senate debate is held tomorrow at Marquette. What are kind of the biggest issues that each candidate is kind of advocating for? Wonderful. Let's first establish kind of which candidates are running. So um, we currently have the Republican Ron Johnson. He's been a senator for three terms and is the incumbent against Mandela Barnes, who is currently serving as our lieutenant governor of Wisconsin. Now, I think the biggest issues for these specific two Senate candidates is going to be inflation and abortion. Um, Wisconsin voters 
I've been really feeling a hit from high inflation, um, especially in this past year. Mm -hmm. um, usually the biggest hit is going to be towards low income families, but especially for middle class Wisconsin families, they are really feeling a lot of pain, mm -hmm. um, not only financially, but having to deal with um, distribution of kind of their budgets, um, with supply chain shortages and labor shortages. Wisconsin is really feeling that. And so, the different kind of thoughts from both camps, Johnson believes that the purpose or like why high inflation occurred in the first place is going to be because of increased government spending. He believes that lowering that or decreasing government spending in any way, shape or form is going to help to high inflation. Barnes on the other hand is focused on an approach that is more considering tax cuts for middle class families. So he believes that will provide a lot of relief kind mm -hmm. of directly to them, whereas Johnson wants to create kind of more of that federal approach and kind of stop federal spending right at that level. Thank you, yeah. Yesterday, Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers speaks about his debate on Friday at a Rotary Club and Milwaukee Press Club event. He talks about his debate with Republican candidate Tim Michaels. Looking forward to it. It's a chance for uh, people of Wisconsin to see how different we are. I, uh, you know, I, t I told the folks in there, I talked about, you know, when I, when I was running against Scott Walker, were there policy decision differences? Absolutely. But not the type of di the distinctions that we see right now between Tim Michaels and myself. Is radical a good description of my opponent? I said absolutely. Think about where he views uh, voting rights, think to where he views issues around abortion. Think about taking 40% of the money away from public schools. If that's not radical, I don't know what is. I can't wait. Friday can't come soon enough. At the event, Tim Michaels declined an interview. So going forward on that, similar to the Senate, what kind of platform and what kind of issues are each candidate for the go governor's debate um, talking about? Right. So especially for this gubernatorial race, they have very differing opinions now. Brought back again, inflation is also a worry, but more specifically for the gubernatorial race, they're more focused on abortion, education, and crime. Now with abortion specifically, Evers has, he called an emergency session when the overturn of Roe v. Wade first occurred at the Supreme Court level. Um, he believes in making sure that there is access, whereas on the other hand, Michaels, um, up until seven weeks before we are about to basically vote mm -hmm. in the November election, his stance had been in a, um, following with the 1849 law that had been basically immediately enacted once the overturning of Roe v. Wade occurred, which is a complete ban to all abortions. Um, but seven weeks before this November election, he has decided that um, his official stance is now that he believes in um, a ban on abortion with exceptions for rape and incest. So those are kind of the two positions on that case. Now looking at education. Um, education has always been a very contentious mm -hmm. issue with Wisconsin voters. There's been a lot of things happening in the past with different representatives for us and different governors. And so this is going to be a really hot topic, especially when voters are going to the polls for this. So um, incumbent Evers, who's the Democrat, he is going to be, um, has proposed a plan of increasing um, public spending specifically for public education within Wisconsin. Now this is a big deal because previously there's been more of a cap on public education spending within Wisconsin. And so Evers wants to get right up in front of that and kind of focus on that monetary level with providing support specifically to teachers and students in Wisconsin. Now on the other hand, Michaels is focusing on two different things. So he's focusing on school choice and then also basically this idea called the Parental Bill of Rights. So school choice is going to be the idea that when students are choosing where they want to go versus public school versus private school, that there are more options. So there are vouchers and charter schools within Wisconsin. He wants to continue to advocate for more of school choice. Um, along with that, he also thinks that parents should have more advocacy within the classrooms, um, proposing bills that kind of legislate more on what teachers are discussing classes in terms of race theory and gender. So those are going to be those two things that he's going to worry about. Crime as well, but I think first and foremost, it's going to be abortion and education in addition to public safety. Thank you so much, Nancy, for joining me tonight. That's our report for tonight. Thanks for joining me. I'll throw it back to Andrew and Caroline in the studio. That's our report for tonight. Thanks for joining us. I'm Andrew Muzu. And I'm Caroline Bennett. Remember to check MarquetteWire.org for all the latest campus news. Good night, Marquette.